Hello and welcome to the Cavern of Terror. <laughs> Hey guys and welcome back to the Cavern of Terror and I'm making a video rather than doing laundry that's quite evilly staring at me right now. No one will ever end. Okay, it's time to get serious. We are talking about a Resident Evil reboot. They're making one and I know what you're saying. No, no, we don't need a Resident Evil reboot. Well, guess what? Just keep your hands away from the keyboard. Let's talk. So a little bit of backstory. My history with Resident Evil, if you will. I am a huge Resident Evil game fan. I have a pretty big Resident Evil collection. I've also done a video on my Resident Evil collection. You can check it out. It's on my YouTube channel here. Uh, I get into the things that I own and what I really like about the original game series. It's a pretty cool video. I suggest that you check it out. On the other hand, I'm not really a big fan of the Paul W.S. Anderson movies. If you've been a subscriber of mine for a while or you've seen a lot of my videos, you know that I reviewed the entire Resident Evil live action movie series. As a bonus, I will do a little ranking right here just to let you know where these movies lie with me. As you can tell by this list that is made on my Letterboxd account, you can go over there and subscribe if you want to see some ranking of series over on my uh, Letterboxd account. I have the first Resident Evil listed in, as number one, and I have the second Resident Evil listed as number two. Yes, these are my favorite movies in the franchise. I think that when Paul W.S. Anderson has a smaller budget, he is reined in a little bit more. He's forced to do more practicals and less CGI. I like his work better when he doesn't have a very huge budget. The second movie is number two. And it's number two because the action sequences aren't quite as good as they are in the first one. Yes, I know what I'm saying. They're not very good considering how good they, how bad they are. Sorry, how bad they are in the rest of the series. Um, I like this movie a lot because it takes place more in the vein of Resident Evil 3. It brings in Jill Valentine. It's very game-centric, and I like that movie for those reasons. I still think that the first movie is a more well-made film. As for the rest of the movies in this original franchise, they all pretty much suck. Resident Evil rebooting. Do I agree with it? If you haven't figured it out yet, yes. 100% I agree we should be rebooting this franchise because, as I said, after the first two, the rest of these movies pretty much suck. Number one, the first thing that we have to talk about is the selection of the director, which has already been done. It is Johannes Roberts. He's mostly known for this movie right here, the sequel to The Strangers, The Strangers Pray at Night. And he's also known for the shark movie with Mandy Moore. Uh, 47 meters down and the sequel which I believe is being made right now 48 meters down. I really liked Pray at Night. I thought that it was a really good movie when I saw it in theaters. Yes the characters do make some dumb decisions and some of the acting really isn't the best. I like Bill Pullman. His son is not is quite a good of an actor. Lewis did a good job in this movie but I don't think he's the level of his dad and his scenes kind of took me out of the movie a little bit but everything else in this I thought was great and I actually think that this movie might be better than the first one. Don't kill me. I like this one more than the first one. Let me be completely honest. When I was watching this movie, The Strangers Pray at Night, I actually saw some things that I think would work really well in a Resident Evil reboot. One of the things that scares me the most in the first Resident Evil game is the aftermath shots. Like when you walk into a room in the first Resident Evil game and you see some fucked up shit, okay? And you're like, what the hell happened here? It brings you in, it draws you in, and there is that tension, a suspense there, is that thing still in the room? What is going to happen next? That always pulled me in when I was playing a Resident Evil game. Especially in the first one, the second one, and the third one. Those scenes and those sequences are all over this game franchise. And we can pull from a scene in Pray at Night. There's a scene in Pray at Night that I believe does this perfectly. And it's the one where the brother and the sister go into their aunt and uncle's bedroom and they see the sheet over top of the 
uh, body there, and they pull it off, and it's the uncle, and he's all fucked up, you know, he's like, his jaw's hanging down, and there's blood everywhere, and he looks like he's, like, missing an eye, but it's, like, shot really quickly, because I think that was the rated cut, I haven't watched the unrated version yet, but anyway, they nailed that sequence the way it would be done in a Resident Evil movie. You walk into this room and like, what the fuck happened here, you know? Another thing that I thought really worked well in Pray at Night was each character felt like their own character. They never felt like they were trying to be someone else. And I think that would work really well with a Resident Evil movie, especially if you're going to adapt the first game, which I think they are this time. You have some very unique character traits in these Resident Evil games with these different characters. So I think that Johannes Roberts could do this very well in a Resident Evil movie, considering how well he directed the actors in Prey at Night. I know it's more of a writing thing that makes these characters who they are, but Johannes Roberts did a very good job at directing these actors to give a good performance. So we have our director, we have Johannes Roberts, and we have the reason why he's the director of this Resident Evil reboot. So what are we going to do with the story? What is the story going to be for this new Resident Evil film? Please, guys, look no further than the first Resident Evil game. This is what we need to adapt this time. Like I said, I like the first Resident Evil movie a lot. It is my favorite, technically, of the original franchise. I think it does very well being a low-budget action zombie film. But we're going to try to do something different with this reboot, which is what you should do with a reboot. We need to slow it down. We need to make it more suspenseful. And more importantly, we need to make it horror. And this game is a horror game. First and foremost, it is a horror game. And that's what Resident Evil should have been the first time. It should have been a horror series. And I think grabbing a horror director like Honest Roberts, who has done two uh, moving on to three horror movies now is a good choice for this it's my personal opinion in the opinion of a lot of people is that the biggest thing that studios get wrong when they adapt a video game franchise to film is they completely get rid of the storyline from the games that is not what you want to do with a resident evil movie everything is laid out for you in the first game that creates such a interesting and mysterious story and that's what we want for this the groundwork for a very compelling really scary ass story is in the first resident evil game what happens in the first resident evil game well i'll tell you right now and i'll give you the cliff notes version the stars team led by albert wesker takes his alpha team up in the arclay mountains to go find the bravo team that has mysteriously disappeared once they get there, they find that the Bravo team has been, you know, they're either gone or dead. One of them's dead. What the hell's going on? These, like, deformed-ass dogs chase them to a mansion. Once they get to the mansion, each one of the characters start disappearing, and we find out that there's zombies inside the mansion. We find out that the zombies were created by this mysterious virus called the T-Virus, created by the Umbrella Corporation, which pretty much creates everything, but they find out that the Umbrella Corporation was trying to make bioweapons. That, my friends, in a nutshell, is the story of the first Resident Evil. What do we do to make this story different from the story in the first Resident Evil film series? Well, first, we're not going to change everything, because that's what they did in the first Resident Evil movie. The first thing that they had done was they kept the zombies, and they kept the outbreak, they kept Umbrella, but they changed everything else. That's not what we're going to do this time. We're going to keep this big conspiracy, but what we're going to do is we're going to up the character development. We're going to find out more about these characters. We're going to draw up the scenes a little bit longer. We're going to add more attention. We're going to add more suspense to the series. How we would do that, for me, would add more character development. Just like I said, we have more character scenes. A lot of scenes of them walking around and talking and trying to figure out how to get through a hallway or, man, what's that noise? We have to go investigate it. How do we get the character development? Well, you bring in a script writer that writes scripts based on characters more than action. And if you need something to base, get your basis off of, 
Look no further than the Resident Evil The Umbrella Chronicles book, or conspiracy book. I've read this book, I don't know how many times, and everything you need to make a good, well-done Resident Evil character is in this book. Each one of the Stars members that go to the Arkley Mountains and the Spencer Mansion are in this book. You get a lot of character development with the characters that you didn't get from the games. That's why I love this book so much, is I got to read more about Chris Redfield. We know his relationship with Claire, that you find out is his sister, in this book. Why he treats Rebecca the way he does. You get to find out more about Jill Valentine, who I sh think should totally be played by Christina Hendricks. I mean, look. She probably wouldn't want to be in this because they would want to make sequels and probably make more action out of it as it goes. I think it should say with the suspense and stay slow, then you should probably bring in someone like Jane Levy. But anyway, we're not talking about characters that I would pick or actors that I would pick to play the characters. We're talking about the characters. And the best way to get good characters is to read this book. Like I said, you get all of the backstory that you need to know from these characters in the book. So you get backstory on Barry, you get backstory on some of the Bravo team members, you get backstory on Chris Redfield, you get backstory on Albert Wesker, Barry fucking Burton, I got this. It's just, this is the way you need to go. Bring in a good writer, have him or her read this, and then build your script off that. That's what I think Sony and Johannes Roberts should do. He should... Base it off the first Resident Evil game, and if they need a good writer to do a story based off this game and add their own flair and add more, um, you know, dimension and character to these characters, they should base it off this book. They should get all their inspiration from this book because it will help you tenfold. I'm going to end this thing telling you what I would do. Well, personally, I would have went with Fede Alvarez to direct, or my dream Resident Evil movie, Guillermo del Toro, with all the visuals. I imagine that Doug Jones would be an amazing tyrant, but anyway, we got Johannes Roberts, and I'm going to keep it that way. The way that I would open this up is I would make everything seem normal. I would show each and every member of the Stars team, you know, just running through their normal everyday thing. You know, you got Chris Fed Redfield working on his car. You got Joe Valentine at like a coffee shop. You got Barry hanging out with his wife and his kids. But then you show Albert Wesker and he is at the star's office. He's working overtime. You know, he's working hard. He's looking at all the monitors. All of a sudden, everyone gets called in. So this scene shows everything normal, but the suspense and tension starts to build. We get everyone get called in. We find out that the Bravo team has went missing. So at this point, you get to know the characters a little bit more. We, we could have a scene calling back to Predator with everyone in the helicopter heading up to uh, the Arclay Mountains. Once we get up there, we have a really dark, suspenseful scene with them checking out the area. Possibly we could have a survivor there. To change things up a little bit. Maybe bring in Edward so we don't have to do a prequel. So I think that would be pretty cool. So once we get to the mansion. We can have everyone um, separate. And from there it becomes an old dark house movie. And I think that would be really cool. An old dark house movie with fucking zombies. That would be really suspenseful and awesome in my opinion. Then you can bring in those character beats that I was talking about. I would really play up the atmosphere. Bring in a, a cinematographer that knows how to work with shadows. Knows how to make those blacks look like ink. I want this thing to be fucking scary. The sound also has to be really good. And you know if you played those old Resident Evil games and you're walking down a hall, dark hall, possibly more on the GameCube remake version than the original. I know the original has these feels as well. But you could be walking down a hall and all of a sudden you hear... There's a zombie coming. And you imagine seeing that in the theater. You know, you got a dark hall, you got Chris Redfield running, walking with his gun in a flashlight. And all of a sudden, maybe you look over Chris Redfield's shoulder and you see someone like slumped over walking towards him. Like, that 
It's terrifying, man. That's what we need in a Resident Evil movie. We don't need to see scenes going all over the place and not having any idea what the hell's going on. We're having a Resident Evil reboot. It's being done by the director of The Strangers Pray at Night for now, if he doesn't back out between the time we get this movie. And that's what I think of it. We need to relax, guys. We need to think things through before we are like, fuck, we don't need this movie. I think that Resident Evil needed to be rebooted, and that's the way that I would do it. That's the way I think Johannes Roberts and his writing team and whoever is else is involved with this should go at it. I think Christina Hedricks should low-key be in this movie. I'm just saying. Resident Evil's being rebooted. I'm for it. What do you think in the comments down below? If you like this video and you're not subscribed to my channel yet, just go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I would really appreciate it. Hit that notification bell. That way you get notified about all my future content. And if you want a Cavern of Terror t-shirt, you can find it at the Cavern of Terror Spreadshirt store. It got some really cool shit over there done by me and my good buddy Woody Billen from Winninator Designs. As always, guys, I would appreciate it if you check me out on social media. You can find all those links in that motherfucking description box down below. But most importantly, guys, I'm Zach. This has been the Cavern of Terror. Stay metal, my friends. Yeah.